SFRC online. In this segment, we'll be discussing two types of GPS surveys, static and stop and go kinematic surveying. The first segment, I will be discussing static surveying. After you have set up your GPS receiver on top of a tripod, a level tri-brack, and you've measured the antenna height, you may begin your static survey. To do this, you will bring the receiver out of the zero power mode. It has been stored in zero power mode, so you will press the reset button to power it on. At this point, you will want to watch the status LED. This indicates the number of satellites that are being tracked. You want to see at least four green blinks in rapid succession. If you do not see the minimum four GPS satellites, you will be recording GPS data that is useless to us. Thus, I will count the green blinks. I see that it is currently tracking one, two, three, four, five, six satellites. I can now start the static survey by pressing the function button. I will hold it down for one second until it turns green. It is now flickering green. This indicates that it is recording data. I do not want to walk away from the receiver yet. I want to ensure that it is still recording data from at least four GPS satellites. I also want to watch the battery LED to make sure that it is green or orange. If it is red, you will be wasting your time out in the field. Static sessions typically last approximately two hours. While you have been actively watching your GPS receiver and not leaving it unattended, you want to stop the recording of the data. At this point, you will press the function button to stop the recording. You will hold it down for approximately one second. I press it and release. As you can see, the record LED has stopped blinking. This means I'm no longer logging data. To properly store your receiver after a GPS static session, you will press down the power button and hold it so that you can put it in zero power mode. You will wait to see two red, two red blinks. I will release and now the receiver is ready to be stored. And now we will take the receiver to the office to download the data. The second GPS surveying method that I will be discussing is stop and go kinematic surveying. In this method, you need two receivers, a base receiver, which will be configured exactly the same as our static observation that we discussed earlier. The next receiver is the rover receiver. This has been pre-configured in the office for stop and go kinematic surveying. We will be setting this up on a bipod. To do this, I will grab the receiver, the rover receiver, firmly in my hand. I will then have my bipod pole assembled in front of me. I will take the top part of the, the rod, which has the level vial on it, and screw this into the receiver like so. Now that it is firmly in place, I will take the bottom part of the two meter pole and screw that in as well. I'm screwing the top part of the rod with the GPS receiver into the bottom part of the rod. This rod is two meters in length. Thus, the GPS receiver will be at a fixed height the entire time of two meters. Next, I will grab the bipod attachment. The best way to set up your bipod is to put the legs on your side of the pole. You will slide the legs in and screw the bipod attachment to the pole and make sure it's secure. You also want to make sure that your legs 
are hovering a little bit off the ground. I will continue to tighten this screw until it is firmly in place. The whole time, I have kept the level vial positioned at me. This enables me to more easily see how I am leveling the rod when I am controlling the legs. The next part is I will release the legs in a wide fashion so that I have good support on the ground. While still holding the legs, I will press in the feet into the ground to make sure that it is secure. The last thing that you want to have happen is to have your bipod turn over or fall to the ground. These receivers are not cheap. I will then adjust each leg using the thumb controls here so that the bubble is inside the circle on the level vial. What I'm trying to do is align the level bubble with one of the legs. This makes it easier to put it inside the center of the circle. After it is in the black circle on the level vial, you have successfully leveled your bipod. Keep in mind that this whole time I've been setting the pole on a point, a control point of reference that I want to set up on. Now that we have successfully set up the stop and go roving receiver onto a bipod, I will want to power this receiver on. To do this, again, I will press the reset button for one second. This is to bring the receiver out of zero power mode. This receiver has been pre-configured for stop and go recording. Thus, when I press the function button, it'll turn orange. This means that it's recording static data. During a stop and go survey, I will want to initialize the receiver for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. This means that I will be recording static data on this control point for 15 to 20 minutes before moving. After the 15 to 20 minute initialization period, you will look at your receiver and notice that it's still blinking orange. To stop this session, you will press the function button. The record light is now green. This means that you can start moving to the next point. Essentially what you are doing in this process by pressing the function key in stop and go kinematic surveying is putting a flag on the data. I will now move to the next point. I have just moved to the second point. At this point, it is still blinking, the record light is still blinking green. This means it is in kinematic mode. I will want to start my occupation session of this point. To do this, I'll hold down the function key. As you can see, it starts blinking orange again. This is putting another marker on the data. You have successfully moved from one point to the next, collecting data between the two points. You will want to stay at this point in occupation mode for approximately two to three minutes. After you have collected all of your points, you will want to stop the entire session. To do this, you will power down the receiver by pressing the power button and holding it until you see the two red LEDs. At this point, you'll be in zero power mode. I've successfully turned off the receiver. I will now store it and bring the receiver to the office so that I can download all the data. In stop and go surveying, the base and the rover are not communicating with each other. Thus, when you post-process the data, you will need to have both files, the static data from the base and the kinematic data from the stop and go roving receiver. At this point, you should know how to perform static and stop and go kinematic surveying.